Hello there everybody and welcome back to this second video in the series that's looking at Bach's fugue in C minor from his first book of Preludes and Fugues. Now if you've watched the previous one you'll have heard me just give you a little introduction to the historical background surrounding the composition of this piece. Now the today we're going to be looking a little more at the analysis side of things we're going to be discovering uh, about the main structural points, the subject, the answer, the counter subject and the episodes. And we're also going to be thinking about the rhythmical drive and the harmonic drive that really pushes the music all the way through to the end. So a fugue is built on a subject and that subject Bach characterised really, really carefully. We'll look at the character of it a little more in the next video, but here is the subject. just that that long. What you might not have picked up is that it actually starts on the second quaver of a 4-4 bar. So in my head I like to hear. Just to give me a little bit of a kick off the 5-1 because that's definitely what is there. And you can hear that it has a very clear rhythm to it. It has quite a, a distinct characteristic there. And that's made up of uh, pairs of semiquavers, pairs of quavers, and there is also a little syncopation at the end, which is lovely, which just kind of ooh, just moves us into a place we weren't expecting. And that rhythmical motif appears again and again and again, as does the little melodic ideas that go with it. That, for example, comes back an awful lot and this gets developed as well. And it's little things like that that will help you to understand the whole kind of um, drive behind the piece and why um, Bach composed it like he did. So we start with that. That is the subject. We're in the key of C minor and indeed it starts on C and it goes down a semitone to the leading note and then back up. And then what happens next is the second part comes in. This is the, let's call it the soprano part. We started in the alto, here we have the soprano part. Have a listen. So we have the subject and that is followed by the answer. It is slightly different. I wonder whether you can hear the spot where it just comes apart a little bit. Here's the subject again. I won't go on any more. Here's the answer. Do you hear? So on the, let's see, what is it? One, two, three, one, two, three, fourth note, it changes. And that is because Bach has written here what we call a tonal answer. He's changed that interval. This is a fifth. And that is all covering, it starts on a G and it's covering the uh, chord of C minor, basically. So he's made it fit the tonality. At the start, because we're on the chord of C minor as well, but because we're going down from C to G, that's only four. So Bach has just tweaked it slightly and we call the change a tonal answer. The other kind of answer is a real answer and that is a real copy of what went before. That would sound like this. Doesn't sound bad, does it really? Could work, but Bach has gone with the tonal one. So we have a subject, we have an answer. And whilst the answer is playing, obviously the subject has to go off and do something else. And it does this. Completely different, but beautifully fitting with that 
that subject or that answer as it is at the time. And this is known as the counter subject. So it provides a counterbalance, if you like, to what is going on, whether it's the subject or the answer. Have a listen to that from the beginning. So I'm going to play the subject, the answer, and listen for the counter subject as well. Uh, okay, have a listen for it. I mean, we've only had four bars so far, but um, he takes some of those ideas like this and he changes them a little and you will And the episodes sort of fill in the gaps because listen to what happens. The episode is only two bars long. Listen for what happens after the episode. Here we go. they go along. So we have the subject, and it really is the subject this time, it's not the answer, it's exactly the same as we had before coming in. And what do the other parts do? We have the counter subject, this time it's in the soprano. Yeah? And then the alto just kind of fills in some nice harmony, have a listen. Itself. Because what's one thing that's really important when you're playing a fugue is to play each line. So here's the alto by itself. I'm going to go from the beginning of bar seven. And one, two, three, four, one, two, three, two. Ha ha ha! It's not the fugue subject, but it's the it's it's popping its little head above, it's the motif, isn't it, that, that Bach is using there. So, subject, answers, counter subjects. They kind of form the main part of the fugue. And in between all these subjects and answers and counter subjects, we get episodes, you heard one there, and you might have heard that it's actually about sequences. Here's another um, episode that I particularly like. Yes, let's just do this one. So in the middle, we have the subject and the answer coming back. And um, I'll go from, uh, if you've got a score, bar 15. Let's see if I can take it in from there and listen for these next little episodes and then listen for the subject coming back again at some point. <laughs> So you have to 
really watch out for that. I find that bit, a little bit tricky. And then towards the end, we have some more episode, and then we have a final statement of the subject in the bass. And it's lower, the whole thing is lower and has more kind of substance and gravitas. is that it's very hard to spot an actual key change and an actual cadence going on in here. He does change key, you know, we go through various keys, but they're always very fleeting. And he's always making his music move on and on and on. And really it's only that final section where we hear a really uh, a grounding perfect cadence in the... until we get to the very end. So I, I hope my, my little discussion of that, my little journey through, has given you a little bit of insight into it. Join me next week where we're going to be doing a bit of musicianship and discovering how working it out in the different patterns will help you to understand the character even more. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.